Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Welcome back to the channel. Um, big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you for joining us here. We're going to have a lot of good outboard fun on this channel. So, uh, we're going to get back on this 2004 Johnson 30. Um, really nice motor, but I want to kick it up a little notch or two and... Uh, and it needs a, it needs some things. It's missing some transom clamps and a few other things. But we're going to take it from a pull start, make it a, a recoil start plus electric start. We're going to put a charging system on it and do a few other things. So first thing I got to do is round up all those parts, or I'll go out there and get the donor motor and uh, the one that I'm going to be taking most of these parts off of. So. That's what we're going to start and uh, see if we can't make this thing a pretty little cutie, modified up, fun motor. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get at it. Okay, here's the donor motor that uh, I'll be getting most of these parts off of. You can see we're on zero. I've got this compression tester in the bottom cylinder. I want to see what the numbers are. We begin, we begin. We got about 75.80. 80 on the bottom cylinder. This is dry. <laughs> See what we get on the top. the top we are on zero so we can work in so we can work in we got about 85 86 87 now this engine was running but it was getting if I remember right what the previous owner told me was that uh, it was getting water in that bottom cylinder somewhere um, I'm going to pull the head off just to look around. Um, so I think this would be a good rebuild candidate um, as long as nothing's cracked or broken. I know we did put, or he put, um, at least he told me he put. As you can see, he's got new coils on it, new wires, and he said he put a new head gasket on. And he said after he did that, it would still not run right. Uh, it would start up, start out running okay, and then just get steadily worse. And then he would look and the bottom cylinder would be, look like it had uh, water on the spark plug and so forth. So it's probably one of the exhaust port gaskets or something. But uh, I think even with those numbers, it's a well-used engine. Both of them are down in the 80s, 90s. And to me, that's not a motor I would most likely sell to somebody. I might fix it up good enough and give it to them. But it's not one that I would sell. I like to have over 100 PSI. 
So this would be a fine uh, block that I could hone up, slap some new rings in and so forth. But I'll pull the head off, if nothing else, because I want that brand new head gasket that he put in there. Don't you know? So, let me get to pulling that off. Hey! It's me, Billy Ray. Why, I'm the best commercial fisherman in the whole North Territory. Why, I was up at the ice dock yesterday morning. I ran into my sister's husband. That's my brother-in-law. He's my cousin twice connected. He told me, you was at it again. He said he saw you putting Evan Root Park in American-made mercury. Why never? You can't be doing that. You can't be taking American-made Joss and Avonroot parts and putting them in American-made Mercury. I tell you, I never heard of nothing like that. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to look around. I'm going to sniff around. And if I find you've been taking Avonroot, Joss, and parts, and putting in American-made mercury, turning it into some kind of, some kind of Merca Stein, I'm gonna come back here and fix you, and I'm gonna fix you right. So sure does, but uh, hopefully she'll pop. Okay, let me get a puller. Okay, I got my puller rigged up on this one and Thor on there. Let's see which way I'm spinning. Wrong way. Right way. Okay. I think she went. Or did it? Nope. <laughs> it's gonna be a toughie. Uh, it, well, let me get that back out of there. You can't see it. I don't think. But I had those screwed in really good and it broke a bolt off right there. So I'm gonna have to get my three arm puller and get it all rigged up. I'll be back. All right I got this puller on there and we're gonna kind of sock it. No. No. Well, what size is it? Too small, too big, too small, too big. I don't want that one anymore. The nice kind. Of course, I could use a wrench. That might do it. That might do it. But I don't know because it's on there pretty darn tight. It's on there pretty tight, you knows. And I'm going to need all kinds of adapters and stuff. Put on my 
safety glasses because this ain't okay well it would have helped if had it the right way yep oh boy oh boy would have helped if I had it the right way spinning the right way Get over there. Boy, this thing barely reaches across this thing, too. Tighten it back up. Tighten it back up. I've got that nut loosened up. Like, you know, the right way. Just a little. Did she go? I'm not sure it did. I think my arm slipped off. <laughs> nope. She is just tight. If I could get it up under that thicker part there. I don't want to bend the tooth part. I think I'm going to try it up under that, like that. See if see if that works better. And you know what? I don't see where that nut. I'm going to leave it way up so I can see it. If it decides to pop. to grip on there really hopefully if I just keep them both I don't know if I have to I can get a big C clamp I guess I don't know wow that's one tight flywheel I'm going to give it just a little heat on the nut. Icy cold water right here. Now yeah, let's see if it. Kind of shock it there. 
Then I'm going to wrap it with a hammer on there. There she went. <laughs> there she went. That's half of my puller. That's the puller. I don't know who makes it. Oh, I've got a few of them, but since that bolt broke off there, she was tight. dump this water outside. No, let me dump this water in my tank. There we go. That was a tight one. It was tight. It looks good under there though. And real clean in there. It was just just a stubborn booger. I do say. Now I want to show you guys something else. If I can get this thing over here. Get it up high enough. All right, so what I want to show you. Sorry, sorry. I should get a camera. Okay. Okay. Now, hopefully, I'm in there. I'm in there. Okay, you can see we've already got, we've got everything here for the spark, the trigger, and the charge lightering coil. Now, what I found interesting was the other motor. Now, this is the donor motor. Um, yeah, let me show you something. Let me show. You. Let me show you. Okay, so there's a donor motor, and you can see everything's under there that you would need, you know, to make this an engine that has electric start and charges a battery. You know, you can see the yellow wires coming out. Well, something I didn't even notice on this motor. Here's the other one. Couple of things. One was when I went to pull the flywheel off, just the uh, three bolts that held the puller on when I went to tighten down on them, the flywheel popped right up. I didn't even have to put a puller on it, just these three holes. When I used my zip gun to tighten the bolts on the puller, it, it pulled this up. Now, look at there what's under there. Now this flywheel, it did have a little rust on it and stuff. You can see there's three points where it's been sitting at that three points for a long time and there's a little bit of rust in there. But overall, it looks nice. It looks nice too. But, look at there. It's already got the lightering coil and everything under there. And there's the yellow wires and all. And I didn't even notice that they were stuck. I pulled them out, I fished them out. They were stuck around under the block. But this thing's already set up for a rectifier, sort of. The rectifier goes right there. Right there in that hole. So, it already has what I need. Which I was not expecting that. Like I said, these wires were tucked around and hid up under the intake. So I couldn't even see them under there. And when I pulled the flywheel, I was like, what? Because I was expecting to have to take that mag plate and everything and put on here. But uh, now the question. The big question is will this tooth flywheel fit on this? And from what I've seen, it's supposed to. If I'm not sure. It looks a little different to me. No, that ain't gonna work. It's hitting this thing. 
But I think that's, here, I don't know if that's the only thing that's stopping. Well, it's hitting them all. So that's telling me it's going, it's seating down too much. So, do I have the right fly feel? See, this flywheel's a whole lot thinner. It's a whole lot thinner than that one. Even though, yeah, see, it, it don't stick out near as far. Goes down about the same, I think, but it, it's just thinner, smaller in diameter. So, yeah, I'm going to put this one on. Wait a minute. Okay. There it is. So the tooth part, I think the flywheel would work. I don't know if those, yeah, these are, they're different brackets. Yeah. At least I think they are. So what I'm going to have to do is take these deals off. And what I might have to do is switch out everything. In other words, I would have to put, I think the mag plates are going to be the same. They, they look the same. The block is different. Or is it? No. It's just this, this older motor had a different recoil and all on it that bolts differently, I think. So I'm going to have to do a little research them. The power heads are the same. So I'm going to take these off real quick and just see if it spins freely. I'll be right back. Hey, let me take these mounts off real quick, get them out of my way. Because I might have to use the other brackets. But from what I understand, these flywheels are supposed to interchange. Okay. There you go. Hold up. Get that spark plug out of there. Get them plugs out of there. Cause see the print is to make this 2004 electric start. And I do believe the crank, the blah, 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 the block is supposed to be, it's supposed to be the same. You know, you know. So, I think it's the same. So what I'm going to do is put this nut back on here. And then I'm going to put a spark checker. And we should have spark. And if it does have spark, then I'm going to have to put... this bracket on there from this motor boy they sure look the same too I don't know well let me get this thing tightened up at least a little bit a little bit a little bit and uh, I don't want to get it back on there so tight that 
that I can't, that I have to go through what I went through before to get it off. So now, I gotta find one of them. The Japters. Okay. So, <laughs> we've got the half Milwaukee. So I've got to plug it in with that one, with this one. Okay. Alright. Let me tighten it up. There we go. Now let me get a spark spire. Now I've done this before. I just don't know that I've done it on a two. I, well, I know I haven't done it on a 2004 model. Let me get me a rag so we don't get no sparking to the pan. You on a on a on a, on a stand. What I'm talking about. Man. Okay. There's me a sparky spider. I'll try and put it where... Well, I'll probably have to move the camera. I'll probably have to move you guys. Sheesh. That's pretty low there. Let me see. There's one. There's one. I found one. Okay. Now we're going to spin this thing over. You guys are for the most part in there. I'll just lower you down a little bit. Okay. All right. Should be these top two. Let's see what we get. Whoa! What the heck was that? So, we got good spark. So, we got good spark with that flyer. Now that's the flywheel off of that motor. Now here's something that might be kind of interesting. Let's take the flywheel that was off of the 04. And put, oh, see if it fits real nice on this one. It do. There it is. Now, I'm going to switch the spark spider over to this one. And see if we get spark on it too. Now, I will tell you, to me, with the naked eye, the, the, the base of these flywheels looks a little bit different. I mean, very slightly so. But, uh, Let's see if this one will spark this guy. Go. Move back and hook it over here. The bolt. Best bolt. There. Yeah. So this is an O. Four flywheel on a, I think this is an 89. I can check that in a minute, but now we're going to see if it has spark. Your rag, so these things aren't touching. And then find me a good chunk of aluminum in there. That might work. Okay. Right in here. See what we get. Now. Yes. Let me tighten it first. Okay. Okay, so we get spark with either flywheel on either motor. 
We do. We get spark, both of them. Now. The issue. You see all this. It needs to go on the 04. Hmm. And those two parts look the same. Now the starter bracket, the other side, we knew we would have to change. And then that starter. So I think it's just a matter, and I'll have to go out and get one. I think it's just a matter of the recoil stuff is different. So I'm going to go look real quick. I'll be back. Now, we all know what it means when I wear this hat. It means somebody came a bearing them gifts. Yes, they did. So, it's Christmas in December. Early December, that is. So, let's go look at it. Well, there she is. Ain't that a... Beauty. Yeah. It's a little Mercury two stroker forty freebie. Not a bad looking little motor. Fella said he got him a new four-stroke. Said this one ran, but it didn't run well. But it pulls over nice. Feels like it's got real good compression. Single car, twin cylinders. No VRO on this model. Very basic. Got the gear shift right here. So, hopefully, transom clamps work. Throttle works. Hopefully, she'll be a runner. It's an early Christmas. Uh, I really can't say I've tried this whole conversion from earlier models to later models, but I think I did. But I, I, I know I did a 90s one time. It was like a 92, and I put electric start, charge system recoil but I used a single dog recoil starter on it and it worked fine if I remember right it it might have had a little bit of too much you know more than you would want of the take up but being that it was electric start it was a backup recoil starting system anyway so um I, I believe I know I've done it on an Evan Rude like 1992 um, this being a 2004, 
I don't think I've ever done one that late past the 2000 model. But that's what I'm going to shoot for, and I think it's going to work. We've got Spark um, with the toothed flywheel from an 89 on there. And by changing out the recoil, it looks like it's going to work just fine. I might have to put some little washers up under the where the bolts go in. I've, I've had to do that before. It's, it's no big deal. And uh, But right now... Um, the next thing I want to do is open up the carb and get it cleaned and, and get it set aside so that that's out of the way. Um, I'll probably... I don't think I'll take the motor down any further than this. I just don't think I'll, I'll have to. Um, it just now needs a good bath. needs a good shower and I will have to set that up it's supposed to get up to like 35 tomorrow afternoon um, and that generally when they say that that generally means a little rain along with it and that would be a perfect time for me to just roll it out get it all lathered up soaked up and get it a good bath because it needs one and uh, then I've got to get the starter and everything and I want to get it all painted up pretty and looking good and uh, just get it ready to go back up with and I got a few parts I need to go out there and get like a rectifier and so forth and the little um, wiring rail and stuff like that I have all that you understand so we'll go out there and get those all together and uh, then I got to get a set of terminal leads for the battery and so forth so we got a few things we got to scrounge up and uh out the old bone palm parts conics and so forth and we will get that done you understand so this one's probably getting a little long so i'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right here and stay tuned we will finish this thing up and hopefully we will get a complete modded all up uh 2004 johnny that's the goal. So, thank you for coming along. And as always, that's one more hat from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.